Hello, I'm Nick Bujiwov, editor of The Logistics Point. The coronavirus is going to define a whole generation and the world will never be the same. Or is it really? In a three-part interview, Lars Janssen, CEO of Sea Intelligence Consulting, marketing analysis company in the shipping industry, talks about when we will feel the full impact of the virus, how it's going to affect trade wars, and what will happen with the fight against climate change. What is happening right now? <laughs> that That is a very broad question, <laughs> See, seen from which context? Um, from the context of uh, shipping, let's say. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I would actually like to start answering the question by what has also happened in the past uh, few weeks, because uh, otherwise what is happening now doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So put it very briefly into context. As we all know, China shut down for a while. That closed the factories uh, for a longer time than usual, causing the carriers to cancel a lot of sailings. So if we fast forward that to where we are right now, that means that right now we're seeing conflicting things happen in the market. Mm -hmm. Because what we're seeing right now is a drop in export capacity in Europe and North America, which has nothing to do with the pandemic right now, but has everything to do with the outbreak in China six to eight weeks ago and is a consequence of all the blank sailings out of China. At the same time, uh, we are seeing ships become more full out of China which is a consequence of the backlogs being beginning to be cleared as truck drivers can move again in combination with orders that were sent to factories by European and North American importers two, three, four weeks ago. So that we are seeing. So, so if we then take it and say what is happening right now because of the lockdown and the pandemic spread in Europe, North America and actually around the world, you cannot see that in the, uh, in, 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 the sh in the container shipping industry right as of this moment. Because here's the issue, again, it's down to timing. In order for you to see an impact on demand drop in the number of bookings, that would require that the importing companies have turned down purchasing orders being sent out to factories, not only in Asia, but around the world. Mm -hmm. And as far as I am aware right now, there were a number of uh, larger importers that began to do just that. But that was basically very late last week they began to cancel a lot of those purchasing orders. Which means then you got a slight time delay until that materializes itself into a sharp drop in bookings of containers. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would be looking for is once that sharp drop in bookings for containers begin to materialize itself, you should expect to see the container lines begin to cancel a lot of sailings. And this time, not only on uh, Asian export sailings, but everywhere across the globe. Uh, as of Friday, there were basically only two sailings so far that were canceled, which to some degree you can say is indistinguishable from normal uh, blanking of sailings. Yes. Yesterday, we began to see a few more trickle in. And I expect to see a sharp increase in the number of blank sailings over the next, uh, let's say, uh, uh, week to 10 days. But there is a slight time delay here. So the impact that we are seeing right now on shipping, that's why I said, what's the context? The impact you see right now, you don't see the impact of the pandemic because there hasn't been enough time for the ripple effects to trickle down to that level. They will materialize over the next week to week and a half. And when they do, we will see a very sharp uh, drop in demand on the container shipping side and a rapid ramp up of more blank sailings. Okay, so how do you think that uh, this will affect the economy then in the coming weeks? Do we have enough materials? What's happening with manufacturing? Everything is going to slow down, uh, not even to mention come to a stop. Because what's going to pan out here over the coming weeks is... The lockdown has two effects. One obviously is on consumer spending. Clearly mm -hmm. when people are home and a lot of shops are closed, that uh, stops a lot of spending. Secondly, when people are sent home or they are seeing their friends lose their jobs, they're afraid of losing their own jobs. So consumer spending will drop very, very sharply right now. That will reduce uh, demand, that's one part. The second part are the businesses, not only the retailers, but every business that deals in physical goods. Uh, 
yes. they will very sharply now also stop placing more orders. Because if you sit and you're the CEO of any kind of company, it can be a retailer, it can be a manufacturing location, doesn't matter. You have to look at it and say, how confident am I in how many goods I need delivered six to eight weeks into the future from now? You will have no clue given what's going on. So you're going to stop mm -hmm. almost all orders except for the necessities you know you're going to need. Secondly, if you look at it, at least uh, the good data, if you look at it from the US, what's the magnitude of the inventories? Here's the problem. If you look at the ratio between uh, inventories and sales, which is a relatively good measure to look at, mm -hmm. we right now have inventories in the US that are larger than what they were just before the financial crisis. So there's plenty of stock that can then be drawn upon before you run out. Uh, if you then compare to the financial crisis, where again, it was a sudden stop in consumer demand and a rapid drawdown of inventories. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, inventories were reduced 18%. This time we start from an even higher level. So you're going to see a very rapid decline in demand from that perspective as well. Are we then going to see a V-shaped recovery? There's been a lot of talk about that over the last few weeks as well. Say, fine, we go into a hole, we come out rapidly. I don't think so. Because if you think it through, yeah. let's be let's be optimistic and say in two months, the pandemic will be over. Let's be that optimistic. Yes. Then in two months, you in order to believe in a V-shaped recovery, there's a couple of things you also need to believe in. First of all, you need to believe that all the consumers will go back to their normal spending patterns just two months from now. That sounds highly optimistic. Secondly, if you look at the businesses, especially the retailers, they would need to believe in a scenario where they will not only see immediate spending come up, but they should also see strong Christmas sales. Just coming out of the pandemic, which retailing CEO would begin to order large volumes into his inventories in the hope of large Christmas sales, especially if you pay attention to the epidemiologists, you know there's going to be a second wave of this coming yes. towards the end of the year. So it seems highly unrealistic you're going to get the V-shaped recovery even if we get out of this pandemic quickly. So if we compare what is sort of the pre your understanding of what could happen with the cri with the current crisis and what was expected to happen in 2020, <coughs> where do we stand? Have all <laughs> predictions been <laughs> drawn? You can, th you, you can throw all the predictions out the window. Uh, let, let's take supply and demand separately. On the demand side, uh, the first time I launched my, my view, that's now a bit over a week ago, almost a week and a half ago, where I said this is going to be as bad as the financial crisis. That has now moved from what seemed to be a pessimistic uh, outlier to more become uh, very much in the realm of the possible. And if you compare on demand what happened during the financial crisis, you actually saw in 2009 a global 10% drop. Mm -hmm. in container volumes. At that point, we had never seen a global drop at all. Uh, and that went straight into a 10% drop. That is very much a realistic outcome of what we're looking at now as well, which of course is in sharp contrast to the, I would say, relatively benign outlook for 2020, which was demand growth globally of about 2 to 3%. On the capacity side, uh, the good news is the order book is historically low. So it was limited how much additional capacity was going to come in anyway. Some of that might very likely be delayed, again, with yards down. The slightly negative effect we might see is there was quite a bit of capacity that was supposed to be tied up sitting in yards to have scrubbers installed. Mm -hmm. Now there seems to be a four to six month queue uh, to get the scrubbers installed because all the Chinese uh, yards obviously closed down. Yes. Adding on top of that, you have the oil price war which has nothing to do with the pandemic and would be the headline if it just happened on its own, uh, which has caused uh, fuel prices to drop to the levels we only saw briefly back in 2016. And the premium on low sulfur fuel as of this morning is now dropping below $50 in some places, which to a large degree will completely eradicate the case for having scrubbers in the first place. So the assumption that some of the capacity this year will be tied up to have scrubbers installed might actually prove to be wrong. Okay, I see. Do you agree with the idea that there has been a lot of talk about it, that after this, after this is over, the way that we 
do things will change forever, that will never be the same, not only uh, the way that the society behaves, but also from business side. Do you think there's going to be such a drastic shift in the way that we operate? No. Uh, first of all, a drastic shift. Uh, I mean, that might just be me becoming very old and very boring. Mm -hmm. But there was plenty of talk during the financial crisis, and we get out from this, then the world will change drastically. There was a lot of talk when we came out from uh, the attacks on 9-11. Now we're going to do things differently. Every time there's a major change, there's also the instinct to say this will change things forever. Usually that's not what happens. What usually does happen, however, is you might accelerate trends that were already underway. And if you look at the global supply chain, you were already underway with a couple of trends that will be accelerated. One trend was towards more digitalization don't need as much uh, physical interference, that will become accelerated mm -hmm. because we can now see how much of a bottleneck it becomes if you need papers signed and people are under lockdown, just to make it very simple. Uh, another trend that we were beginning to see is a dispersal of the supply chain. Rather than outsourcing everything to big locations in China, there was already a trend to disperse yes. that both across Asia, but also to nearshore some parts of uh, manufacturing. What this crisis will very likely lead to is an acceleration of that trend, but I do not see it as a consequence of this. It's not going to happen overnight. It, it was a trend that was already there. Now there's just another reason for everybody to say, fine, let's proceed further down that path. This was the first part of our interview with Lars Janssen. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when the following parts are published. Thank you for watching.